Did you know that the same virus that causes chicken pox or bulutong tubig stays in our bodies even after recovery? Then this virus lies dormant for many years and for most adults, it reactivates and causes what we call shingles or herpes zoster. And like most other viruses, the treatment for this is very limited. But there are remedies to provide relief for its symptoms. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez, and this is MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines, where your healthcare comes first. Shingles may seem like an ordinary rash at first, but it can be very painful. And if not treated properly, it can lead to serious complications depending on where on the body it manifests. Joining us are Dr. Sharon Lim. She's a dermatologist from the Makati Medical Center, as well as we are joined by Dr. Charles Edward Florendo. He's the head of family medicine at Mary Child's General Hospital. Thank you both for joining us. Now, shingles may also be referred to as herpes zoster, which is the medical term for that, which is an infection of the same virus that causes chicken pox. Dr. Sharon, what happens when a person has shingles? So what usually happens is your immune system is weakened, and then it's a reactivation actually of the chicken pox virus, and it just manifests a little bit differently as you get older. Okay, now you mentioned uh, that uh, shingles is a reactivation of the chicken pox virus. What causes or what reactivates this? So there are many factors actually. Um, you can have a weakened immune system, stress, or if, even if you exercise too much, if you have too much sunlight or UV light, um, if there are a lot of psychosocial stressors in your life, like say you've been sick or somebody has passed away, um, you've ended a relationship, um, if you have a lot of things going on, you're stressed at work, um, any arguments, those things can weaken an immune system and cause the reactivation of shingles. Dr. Charles, are there any people who are more at risk for this reactivation or to having well, shingles? Yes, uh, Freddie. In fact, no, people who are 50 years old and above have a higher risk of getting shingles. Another one are people who are receiving chemotherapy. So particularly cancer people, uh, people who, have, who are suffering with cancer and they're being given chemotherapy. And people who are living with uh, diseases that may be causing their immune system to weaken. These are people who are, who are living with HIV, for instance. They have higher risk of shingles. Okay, now shingles can occur anywhere in the body but it usually develops as a painful rash on uh, one side of the body or even the face. And most commonly, that rash occurs uh, in a single line or it follows a certain dermatome uh, at either side of the body. Now, Dr. Sharon, why do these rashes stay this way? Why does it look like it follows a certain path? Yes, um, it's very distinct actually because it usually affects several different what you call dermatomes. Your dermatomes are um, part of the innervation is actually a nerve root, which stems from your spine, and it follows a certain line. And so that's why your rash for herpes zoster is very distinct. And usually it involves more than one, what we call dermatome. It is usually quite, quite um, spread out, but very, very sharp kind of linear um, distribution. Okay. Now, uh, Dr. Sharon, can you expound more on how distinct herpes zoster can look like? Because a rash may seem just like any other rash. Actually, when it first starts, it looks like it can even be a pimple. People think it's pimples. People think it's something that they applied that might have caused an allergy. But what's very distinct about herpes zoster is that it's either very painful or very itchy. And you can't understand why. And then the pain tends to be more of like linear pain um, that kind of um, resonates or parang sometimes it even pulses because nga it attacks the nerve. Okay, yes, that's right. Now, a common site also where shingles may appear or may develop is on the face. And it can spread from the ear uh, up to the nose and even the forehead and can also even spread around one's eye. Dr. Charles, what usually happens if the rash sh spreads to one's face? Well, of course, it's going to be painful. There's going to be a lot of pain in the, uh, on, your, uh, on your face. But if it affects the facial nerves, 
Uh, the optal, if it affects the facial nerve, it can affect the hearing. If it affects the ophthalmic nerve, it can affect your, uh, your eyesight. So there are very few cases, but it can happen that there could be some uh, blurring of vision and even blindness, and it can also cause sometimes hearing disorders. So what should they do if they find a rash that is painful, that is itchy? They need to consult with their doctor, and we will give them an antiviral to bring this down as soon as possible. The second one is we have to strengthen their immune system. Too much ultraviolet light can do, do this, uh, stress, wrong diet. So we have to address all of these at the same time. A lot of patients who have experiences really say that the pain that they feel from very annoying to very excruciating. How is this uh, normally managed, uh, Dr. Charles? First is we have to take care of the virus. <laughs> so we have to give an antivirus. And in the pain itself, usually we can give a pain reliever such as uh, tramadol. No? But tramadol can cause a bit of dizziness. But that's one of the better ones for this type of pain. Okay. Now remember, not all rashes are shingles. But go see your doctor, your dermatologist, as soon as you develop unusual rashes. Because the sooner that you're diagnosed with shingles, the better. When it comes to not seeing a doctor right away when they, whenever they have a rash, and sometimes they may manipulate this, they may scratch this. How severe can shingles become? Um, so one of the more dreaded complications of your shingles is actually if you develop a, um, a concomitant bacterial infection from your constant manipulation, because usually majority of our patients tend to like to use herbal, herbal remedies, and sometimes that can also um, couple not only a viral infection, but also as a bacterial infection as well. So that needs to be treated as well. Okay, so that's a very important part. You don't want it to be infected because one of the first signs of shingles is that of a tingling or burning sensation days before the rash shows up. And that rash can develop into blisters filled with fluid. Now, Dr. Sharon, apart from the visible symptoms, what are the other telltale signs of shingles? As you had mentioned, the pain uh, is not um, proportionate to the rash. And then all of a sudden, you have these grouped, water-filled uh, uh, bumps um, where the rash is developing. And then it tends to occur in uh, crops. And the most um, distinguishing thing about um, herpes or shingles is uh, that the pain is much more um, painful and it kind of waxes and wanes over a few days. Um, so that's quite distinctive. So shingles typically lasts from two to six weeks. So who are at risk and how can you protect yourself from shingles? We'll talk about this and more when we come back. We're together in health and you're watching MedTalk Health Talk on CNN Philippines. you've had chicken pox as a child that that virus moves into your nerve tissues near your spinal cord as well as your brain where it, where it likes to stay there for a length of time and a weakened immune system among other things can reactivate that virus medtalk health talk is your connection to healthcare i'm dr freddy gomez now dr sharon chicken pox is highly contagious but is it the same for shingles Actually, luckily, shingles is not as contagious as chickenpox. It's usually more um, contagious to people who have not yet had chickenpox. Perhaps your pregnant women or your children who have not been fully vaccinated. Those are usually the most prone or the most um, sensitive patients. Now, my question here is for Dr. Charles. So if someone who does have shingles, syempre nakakabahala ito, especially for their other members of the family, how can they prevent transmission from this? Okay, first of all, uh, we'll be clear. The people who, are, who can receive no, the varicella virus are the people who've never had chicken pox and people who haven't been vaccinated for chicken pox. So if I've already had chicken pox, I can't get the virus again. No, I'm already immune to it. But the, now the thing here is, if a person um, gets exposed to somebody who has shingles, the, the lesions are open and they're wet, no? the, the wet lesions. Yes, you can get the virus, but the person who will get the virus will not get shingles. He, he or she will get chicken pox. Secondly, uh, to prevent chicken pox infection, you have to isolate the person with shingles away from the people who don't have, who never had chicken pox. 
Okay, very good. So isolating that person uh, for for a specific amount of time. How how long is the isolation uh, phase, uh, Dr. Charles? Well, we have to wait until the lesions start to dry up. But this take, uh, typically lasts for just a week, uh, a week or two weeks. But uh, sometimes it can last a little longer. But so when the lesions have dried up, then it's usually uh, safer for these people. Uh, they're not as contagious anymore. Now, Dr. Sharon, for those in isolation, uh, w when they do have shingles to, to help prevent it from those who may have not had varicella yet in their lives, how can they manage those at home? Well, usually we, we try to give um, a salt water compress. It's, it's easy to make at home, um, just not too salty, just a little bit of salt to help dry out and draw out the water from the lesions or water from the wounds, and to also act as a little bit of a disinfectant. But um, it's important that you don't use too much salt because it can be quite irritating, and also it can also cause a burning sensation or irritant reaction. So just a little bit of salt, a salt water compress usually will take care of it. Okay. And for the, for the pain, uh, Dr. Sharon, what can they take for pain? Can normal pain relievers be able to manage the pain felt with shingles? Um, usually from um, pra clinical practice, usually not really. Uh, as Dr. Charles mentioned earlier, um, you can opt to give a pain reliever, say your tramadol or a paracetamol um, combination. That helps. Um, usually, though, we give something a little bit stronger because... Um, it really depends also on your um, uh, tolerance for pain. Some people, it's just intolerable in the evening and it causes them to lose sleep. So we'll usually give something like an anticonvulsant or an anti-epileptic, such as your pregabalin or your gabapentin, because it also has a side effect of um, drowsiness or sleepiness. So that, type, that is a little bit more effective, uh, we find, than just giving a plain uh, paracetamol or ibuprofen or your uh, acetaminophen. Like any viral infection, the treatment for shingles is very limited. So the best way is to prevent having this to begin with. And what's the best way? We'll tell you after a short break. Your health is our mission on this program. MedTalk Health Talk will be right back. Stay with us. Watching Med Talk Health Talk on CNN Philippines, I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. The first thing that we hear patients talk about when they have shingles is the pain, and it's one of the first symptoms. The shooting pain happens because the virus that causes shingles travels down nerve fibers. And more importantly, the sooner you're diagnosed, the better to avoid serious complications. Dr. Charles, what are the possible complications of shingles? Well, first of all, uh, the pain can be debilitating and it can last for as much as years for some people. The shingles virus can also leave starts on your nerve fibers. So if it does that, the pain can be excruciating and it can last many years for some people. What about long-term pain, nerve pain, such as post-herpetic neuralgia? Could this be a common complication for shingles that isn't treated properly? The nerve there... Uh, it can really last for many years for many people and can really be debilitating. There's no real medicine for this. We can try pain relievers, you can try uh, physical therapy, but the pain may stay for a long time. If the nerve fibers that, that are damaged are in parts of your body, which turn out to cause you problems uh, with your function. I'd have patients who's had the shingles on their feet. And they, they, they can't walk properly because of the pain, no? So if it's in a part of your body that will restrict your motion or your function, then this is really something that can really uh, be uh, really irritating in a daily, daily process. Now, Dr. Sharon, there are medications such as antivirals in topical form. Will these sort of treatments be effective in controlling shingles or treating shingles for that matter? Usually the, anti, the topical antivirals are really not as good as your oral antivirals. Um, I think an important disting, distinction needs to be made um, versus bacteria and um, virus because a lot of patients try to take an antibacterial um, antibiotic to get rid of your um, herpes, herpes or your shingles. Um, what's important is giving an oral antiviral um, because... The, the adherence of the medication is much better. Um, if you give a topical, sometimes you have to apply it five times a day. 
So it limits the effectivity of the medication if you're not able to apply it five times a day because obviously we have other things that we need to get done during the day. So sometimes it can be a little bit cumbersome. So, and what's the, the most important thing about any kind of viral infection is to boost your immune system. So it's important that you eat well and you rest well. Um, you take the time out to um, sleep well. So sleep is quite important. So it's very important that you're able to get rid of the post herpetic neuralgia or somehow manage it so that your patient can have a good night's sleep so that they can fully recover and their nerves can fully recover. Yes, that's why I can't stress to our viewers enough that it is important for you to be properly diagnosed to get the proper treatment. That's why seek consult with your doctor and your specialist uh, as soon as you feel any of these symptoms. Now, getting the shingles vaccine is one of the ways or probably the most effective way to protect yourself against shingles as well as post-herpetic neuralgia. Now, Dr. Sharon, can you explain to us what this vaccine is and how it is administered? Okay, so the usual age where you do get herpes uh, zoster or shingles is about 50 and above. Um, there are a few people who get it when they're younger because they have a weakened immune system or they have a lot of stressors. But the, the approved age for um, the zoster vaccine is uh, 50 and above, but it's usually more common in, in patients who are about 60 years old. It's quite uh, advisable to get when you're older because but if you do manage to get post-herpetic neuralgia, usually the pain is much more severe and much longer. So we try to protect our more um, geriatric patients by advising them um, the, the vaccine. What can happen with those who get shingles at an older age as opposed to those who get shingles at a younger age? Of course, your wound healing is much more um, efficient when you're younger. Um, when you get older, sometimes your wound uh, healing because you have tend to older people tend to have a lot more other comorbid, say hypertension or heart disease or diabetes. Um, if your diabetes is uncontrolled, your wound healing tends to be much slower, especially when you're older. It's just your your body's ability to regenerate cells is much slower as you get older. So it's more important to have preventative um, treatment in the forms of vaccines. Um, to be able to prevent even just getting um, shingles. Okay, very good. Now, Dr. Charles, if someone already had shingles in the past, would you advise them to still get the vaccine? Uh, no more, no. Um, basically, what the vaccine does is it's actually another virus that is introduced to your body and it's, uh, it's a killed or an inactivated virus. Now, so actually, if you already had chicken pox or shingles in the past, you already have that virus in your body. So there's no need to, uh, to, to give the vaccine again. Um, also, I'd like to stress, uh, you can give the chickenpox vaccine, that varicella vaccine, as early as one year old. And the follow-up at uh, three months thereafter. We have to stress that you have to strengthen your immune system. You have to keep your immune system strong because if you had chicken pox before, uh, any of these stressors can make the shingles come out. So it's good to, to practice a healthy lifestyle to prevent you from getting shingles. Very good advice on having a healthy lifestyle to help with treating shingles because eating well and staying hydrated can help with the recovery of shingles. Load up on green leafy vegetables, eat lots of fruit, take your vitamins as well as other supplements. Probiotics also help boost immune function and it provides beneficial bacteria to the intestines. Avoid alcohol as well as caffeine, which can be overstimulating for the nervous system and can cause dehydration at that. And more importantly, get plenty of rest. With that, we'd like to thank our guest, dermatologist Dr. Sharon Lim, also family medicine specialist Dr. Charles Edward Florendo. Marami pong salamat sa inyo. Your health is our mission. I'm Dr. Freddy Gomez. Thank you for watching MedTalk Health Talk only on CNN Philippines.